On January 13, 1977, Thomasine DeShazer, a 22-year-old black woman, was shot twice in the head at the South Emergency Entrance to the Southwest Community Hospital. It was around 11 to 11.30 in the morning. She had contracted to repair hospital equipment around town and had been ambushed at this entrance. The body was oddly still in her light blue 1976 Ford LTD when it was discovered a full day later, which is pretty odd considering it was in a very crowded place, but I mean, look at this hospital nowadays. We're going towards the south entrance. It's not that busy. And this is the south entrance of the community hospital that Miss DeShazer was ambushed from and killed. And this entire parking lot on this end of the hospital is surrounded by places that would make ambush very easy. And I'm just going to venture to guess that the parking lot at the south end of the community hospital was the main parking spot for employees. As you can see, this would have been a decent spot for an ambush. You've got a pathway over there leading to the woods, a dumpster on the edge of the parking lot that's been there for a good period of time. And if you hadn't pulled your car up right to the south entrance, you could have easily been overlooked for a good few hours if someone had shot you in your vehicle. And again, this was the very first of the Atlanta Lover's Lane murders that we know about. And pretty much as soon as the Atlanta child killings began, police ignored all of these Lover's Lane killings, even though it bore a lot of similarities to other more infamous serial killings like the Zodiac Killer, who would famously murder lovers, although those lovers were white. And Atlanta police, much like with the Atlanta Child Killer, didn't really care to investigate all that much when it was only affecting black people. Thomasine was born in Virginia, but lived here at 1177 Constitution Road Southeast. Police believed the motive was robbery, but didn't tie it to the Lover's Lane murders until after a clear pattern had already been established. Some modern timelines of the Lover's Lane killings don't even consider her a victim of the same serial murderer, but police made her a pattern case and stretched their investigation thin as a result. January 14, 1977, Eugene Lewis, a 36-year-old black man, was found shot to death in the street at 1314 Ellsworth Industrial Boulevard. He'd been shot at around 5 p.m. in a similar ambush as the first murder from a parking lot with isolated spots and a slope to hide behind. Eugene was a resident of 712 Meldrum Street Northwest, Apartment 1. Now, the nearest thing I can find at 712 Meldrum Street is this small house, so I think it might be 721 and could have been misreported. Police initially suspected robbery, but probably started getting nervous when another man was murdered that same day. And you can see here, from this small house, or from right down the road a little bit more, downtown Atlanta, we're kind of in the outskirts now, so over here is 712 Meldrum Street, and if we loop back around over here, we can see this whole area is rapidly gentrifying. Look at all these Californians moving in. But this is 721 Meldrum Street, which for a while was a gas station, but could very easily have been an apartment because the details on the murder said that he was killed in apartment one. January 14, 1977, Robert Lee Wilson, a 35-year-old man, was found dead in his home located here at 172 Hutchinson Street Northeast. Note that the papers say Southeast, but there is no Hutchinson Southeast, and that's a common mistake for the papers to make in the 1970s and 80s. He was killed on the same day as Eugene Lewis. He'd been shot in the neck with a 38 pistol. Police reportedly arrested 46-year-old Aline Brown, who lived at the same address, and charged him with the murder of Wilson. Police were eager to close the case and brushed off the previous two murders as most likely unrelated. I'm unaware of what happened to Mr. Brown, and he's not mentioned in any later Atlanta papers. And since this 1977 murder, the area around Hutchinson Street Southeast has become very gentrified. You can see nicer apartments and this is in sort of southeast Atlanta. 
On January 16th, 1977, at 1 in the morning, a vehicle crashed into a sign near the 2000 block of Beecher Road Southwest. Witnesses reported an eerie silence and called the police after a few minutes. When the authorities got there, they found 26-year-old LeBrian Lovett and his 25-year-old girlfriend, Veronica Hill. The two were both naked, and Hill was lying in the back seat, covered by a coat. Lovett had been shot in the right leg, the left arm, the head, and the stomach. Her boyfriend, LeBrian, lived at 2197 Beecher Circle Southwest, only minutes away from where he crashed into the sign at 1 in the morning, right down the road. It seems like the two were at a well-known makeout spot, Adams Park, kissing in the car when someone outside shot into them with a 38 pistol. Lovett had probably reacted quickly and jumped out of the back seat, flooring it while Hill herself took cover. The two died on the way to the hospital, and at this point, the cops suspected it was just a jealous ex, but didn't link it to any of the previous murders. Veronica Hill lived right here at 385 Harlan Road Southwest, about an eight minute drive from her boyfriend. On February 12, 1977, 17-year-old Deidre Tatum and her 18-year-old boyfriend, Dennis Langston, were sitting in the front seat of their car, apparently on a date. It was a Saturday, and the two were eating some fast food from a restaurant they had just visited. They knew each other well, and both lived in these apartments at 400 Fairburn Road Southwest. Like the other killings, they were in a Lover's Lane Park, West Manor. Langston saw a black man with a gun briefly try to enter the car. Bullets then smashed through the right front window and wounded both of them, although they would both survive. They reported that they heard no noise and saw no sign of trouble leading up to the shooting. And just as quickly as the murders began, they seemed to end. In late March, police revealed that at least the last couple shootings were connected. The same 38 pistol had been used, and they staked out Adams Park for his next scheduled date. They boiled it down to an actual schedule because the killer was shooting couples once every three weeks. The suspect never showed up, and by 1980, the case was cold, months after the APD started investigating the Atlanta child murders, which were by that point just beginning. By that time, however, the police were totally invested elsewhere, and the case has sat cold for the last several decades.